Have you ever noticed yourself looking at the sky, observing unusually shaped clouds and resembling them to an object or an animal? Ever wonder how that happens? It's all the work of a human brain. Our brain perceives and groups information received through the five senses and either consciously or unconsciously gives it meaning in a comprehensible manner. This is where gestural principles come into play. In 1920s, a group of German psychologists devised a theory to understand how we process visual information. Gestural principles have been widely used to enhance user experience and influence sales. In this video, we will be exploring a few gestural principles and understand how can we employ them to enhance user experience. The principle of similarity. This principle is grounded in the ideology that when things share similar visual characteristics such as shape, color, size, texture, orientation, value or any other property, they will be perceived as a group. For example, in the image given below, even though all the symbols are the same, each row is perceived as a distinct group. By giving different layout elements, similar visual features, a designer can stimulate appropriate neuronal connections in the user's brain that helps them to decode the design quickly. For example, in the designs given below, the designer has distinguished different sections of the website by utilizing different colors and shapes. In the first design, the rectangles are indicative of different genres of music, whereas the circles are indicative of different artists. In the second design, it is very evident that the purpose of the purple section differs from that of the purpose of pink and yellow section. Moving further towards the principle of proximity. It is a cognitive tendency to perceive elements close to each other as related than the elements that are placed farther away. This is caused by the subconscious urge to organize the information one is exposed to and group them automatically. For example, in the image given below, the first set of elements are perceived as one group and the elements are presumed to be related. In the second set of elements, the elements are perceived as two separate groups with differences between them. In a research study conducted, the relative distance of elements, that is the proximity, overpowered the distinctive features such as the color. In the first set, the elements are separated by color and contrast. However, in the second set, even though the color of the elements are different, they are still perceived as group because of proximity. By grouping similar content together, a designer can facilitate a seamless relationship between elements, thus delivering a better visual experience. In user interfaces from text to images and web forms to navigation bars, this principle is substantially utilized. For example, in the designs given below, the nearness of each icon or image to its corresponding text communicates that they are related to each other. Moving towards the principle of closure, human visualization is strongly driven to see objects such as shape, alphabets, pictures as whole even when they are not complete. When a few elements of the pictures are missing, our brain attempts to close the gaps and use our perception to fill the gaps and perceive it as whole. We attempt to, we attempt to convert and perceive the complex ambiguous elements into easy ones. Isn't it intriguing to see how our mind fills the gaps and perceives these moving dots as dark? When the user is exposed to the right amount of information, the brain perceives and derives a conclusion by filling the gaps and creating a unified whole. This way we can lessen the cognitive load that the user may have and also decrease the visual noise of the design. A loading indicator Progress bars or sliders are good examples of the law of closure. By using negative space, we make the solution obtained more understandable to the user. This principle has also been widely used in iconography and logos. Proceed towards principle of figure ground. 
This principle asserts that we tend to unconsciously segregate the visual field into figure and ground, that is the foreground and the background, in order to structure and organize the information. The foreground entails elements of the page that attracts our primary attention and the background is everything else. We do this by comparing the two or more elements size and perceiving the smaller object as a figure and the larger as the ground. For example, in the design given below, our eyes instantly see the shape that is a circle, a star or a triangle sitting on a brown background. This principle has also been used to design a variety of logos. For example, in the first image, we instantly differentiate between the background and the foreground and perceive the letter M. This principle has also been used to lay emphasis on pop-up information over other content. Page that was formerly the figure, that is the fo focus of user's attention, temporarily becomes the background for the new information, which is the new figure. This approach has been widely employed since it provides adequate context that helps the user to be oriented while interacting with the page. This can be observed in the second design. Proceeding towards the principle of continuation. When the elements are arranged on a line or a curve, they are likely to be perceived as more related. Our visual perception has a tendency to perceive elements placed in a continuous form rather than in a disconnected array of elements. For example, in the figure below, the green dots in the curved line seem to be more related to the orange dots in the curved line than the green dots in the straight line. Hence, the ability of our eyes to naturally follow a curve or a line is stronger than identifying similarity of a color. We subconsciously tend to follow the smoothest line and create connection between the elements. This is an extremely valuable tool to guide users' eyes in a particular direction by placing the vital elements in that path. For example, a horizontal slider, drop-down options, etc. In the designs given below, placing the essential elements in a row helps to easily locate and provide a better user experience. Lastly, moving towards principle of symmetry. This principle asserts that we group objects that are symmetrically equal to reduce ambiguity and complexity. Our human visual system, when exposed to a stimulus, generates multiple interpretations. But our brain tends to automatically interpret and simplify the information by giving it symmetry. For example, in the design given below, we are likely to perceive it as a set of three opening and closing brackets. Thus, symmetrical balance overpowers the proximity principle. Symmetry is a useful tool to communicate information on a web page. Since our eyes seek those attributes that are in order and symmetry, it has been widely used in portfolios, navigation, galleries, product displays, banners, listings, and content-heavy pages. In the design given below, the designer has symmetrically segregated the information depending on its kind. 